So by a permaculture standpoint, I'm going to show you that my garden, I'm doing it all wrong. And of course I have to pick a day where my neck hurts to want to rearrange this stuff, but it's all wrong, I've got to fix it. <laughs> okay, so let me show you what I mean. In permaculture, you want to put things closer and there goes my brain again. <laughs> okay, in permaculture, the things that you need to do the most or that you need to play with the most should be the closest to you. And the things that don't need much maintenance, you put farther away. And especially when you're dealing with a disability like I am, you have to be really extra careful. So for example, those cucumbers. Cucumbers like their water, you've got to really watch them for all sorts of things. Um, and you know the vines crawl where they're not supposed to and I need to get back there and I have a balance problem so leaning over this is a huge ordeal <laughs> so those cucumbers have to come somewhere here but they take up so much space I don't want them to shade the other plants so I really need to think about this and stuff like the asparagus that basically just needs to be watered once in a while but uh, is doing its thing can go farther back there but because it's so tiny, I want to make sure that it's not shaded by bigger plants like peppers. So uh, a lot to think about, even in a small space. Maybe especially in a small space. It may have looked a little bit maybe prettier before I did this. And this maybe doesn't look like it makes sense in terms of a layout. But by permaculture standards, this is actually uh, how you do it. So with permaculture, you look at microclimates. And in a small balcony like this one, micro is exactly what this is. Now I have, like I said, a balance problem. So I have to set up my plants that require, and you should do this in permaculture anyway, the plants that you're going to tend to the most. Uh, like the ones you have to pollinate yourself, um, the ones that might be vulnerable to pests or, or disease or things that you harvest all the time, like herbs for example. So your herbs would be the first thing that you can get your hands on outside the door. So I've got my dill, I've got some berries, parsley, rosemary, basil. Uh, right here I have um, parsley and actually daisies, but I like them. Also, see right by the door, there's my hubby. He's working on a bass line. Hi, honey. Say hello. That's the Triple I right there from TripleI.com. So right outside our door, into the balcony, um, are my cucumbers. And that's because these guys need a lot of attention because they climb like crazy and they attach to things. But also I have to pollinate these myself because I'm just, I don't want to trust that bees are going to make it on the 23rd floor. So I have to keep a close eye because once that plant opens, you've got to pollinate it right away or it will abort the fruit. So here is the perfect angle for me to look for female plants because you've got to distinguish, sorry, which flower is female and which is male. So here I can get a nice close up you know, access to my uh, cucumber plant without, look at the mess, I'm so sorry about that, I swear I'm going to clean it up, I just haven't been well, so I only do what I can, and cleaning is not one of the things. Okay, so uh, see, so having the cucumbers right there by the door, I can access them right away, and for example, I used to have them way back there. Um, but once I pulled them out here, I saw yellow leaves at the bottom. I saw a stem that was uh, touching the soil. Big, big no-no. So I was able to clean these guys up a little bit and give them some TLC. Now these pumpkin have just been hit with powdery mildew. Uh, actually, only one of them has, and it got segregated for a while. But um, so I want to be able to really examine them up close. So I know that these trellis, so you would expect to have them in the back, but again, keeping in mind my issues, the stuff that need a lot of attention need to be where I can access them without having to bend over very much. Now, this corner happens to be the sunniest corner. It gets a beautiful, beautiful light, especially in the morning. So the stuff that needs to grow and sprout, that needs sun, 
but doesn't have any um, tending to do. Like the garlic just sits there. My asparagus is going to take forever. Uh, gets a beautiful light here, but again, it's out of my way, and I don't have to climb over anything. And there's the tomatoes are still where they are because they're really happy there, and they get a good sun. And I'm just not gonna, you know, mess with it. So yeah, so it's organized, now I have access to everything, and I'm not going to hurt myself, except that I do have to declutter, because that is a big hazard for somebody like me. But you know, when I'm working, I just don't have it in me. When I'm home, it's one thing, but by the time I get home from work, I'm finished. So, since I'm home for a few days, I'm trying to be as productive as I can, keep my mind off stuff, and it's been really good medicine so far. So I did end up replanting that little guy, and he's in shock, but uh, hopefully he'll come out. Hey. So I got the garden all fixed up, and uh, I had to come back to bed. <laughs> I would have liked to have this conversation in front of the garden, but uh, I couldn't. I had, I had ice packs, and now I'm in bed. Um, but I'm not bad, considering. So it didn't even take that long, and it was worth the effort I took right now is going to be taking a lot of effort off me in you know from now till the end of the garden so um I don't know it was worth it I think to do that so let's talk a little bit about permaculture and disabilities. It's the perfect kind of garden actually for somebody with disabilities because the idea again with permaculture is to make everything convenient and to get the most yield using the least amount of energy. So uh, when you're disabled, you're usually exhausted and uh, you don't have excess energy to use on anything. So um, it's important to set your garden up in ways that will make things easier for you. So for example, for many, <laughs> sorry, all of a sudden my little steward came to say hello. Say hello, steward. Um, you can't have the camera. He's trying to steal the camera. <laughs> um, so for people with disabilities, many anyway, it's hard to bend down or to bend over. So you would have, for example, a raised bed. That's what I have. Instead of having my plants on the floor, and since I'm on a balcony, I want to elevate them anyway for maximum sun exposure. So uh, I have everything elevated so that at most um, I have to maybe go down on my knees, but on my knees everything is you know at neck level because my issue is I have trouble bending over because that causes symptoms so I have to be able to be straight you know as much as possible all the time and have everything you know like chest level is almost ideal waist to chest level so um, yeah so what I've done is I've made it easy for me to adapt to that by raising everything so that's a common thing that uh, disabled gardeners do um, again having a balance issue my concern was when we moved to a house walking a property because the property is going to be um, all different you know levels and for me for example walking uphill isn't that big a deal but walking downhill is treacherous anything downhill just forget it so and also I walk with a cane which means I only have one hand to carry things so what if I have tools to carry water jugs whatever whatever I'm using in my garden that day how am I gonna do that I'm gonna have to make a thousand trips and I don't have the energy to make a thousand trips so I need some kind of wagon but I can't pull a wagon and walk with a cane um, and pulling a wagon is gonna throw off my balance because my balance can get thrown off by anything so holding my arm backwards forget it I'm finished so I've designed a wagon I'm going to buy myself a wagon and my father-in-law is going to soup it up for me and we're going to put locks on the wheels so I can lock them whenever I want and he's going to make a PVC-ish sort of rectangle handle, sort of like a walker would be. And, um, and the idea is that it'll be at waist level. So when I want, I can put all my stuff in the wagon and instead of pulling the wagon, I can push the wagon with my little walker thingy so that will give me stability and balance and I can use it to help pull myself up if I have to be on the floor and uh, unlock the wheels so that I'm safe and then we're gonna build a little bench pillow thingy 
that I could use as a knee stool or a bench that I can then put on my wagon so that if I do have raised beds that are just raised off the floor a little, I have something to sit on or kneel on, again, to reduce me having to, you know, exert myself. So you got to just think outside the box. What is it that's holding you back or what is it that worries you when you're making your garden plan? And, you know, I was stumped. Like, I was stumped. How am I going to carry stuff? And, you know, all of a sudden I had the wagon idea. So you'll get an idea. Ideas will come to you. You put it out to the universe and the universe will give you a solution. There's a solution to everything. And that's the whole idea of permaculture. The other thing with permaculture are things like food forests that are made of perennial plants. Perennials tend to be a lot tougher. And you do the effort once to plant them. And then, you know, a little maintenance here and there. But they're pretty sturdy usually. And uh, all of a sudden you have food for life. You know, so food forests kind of take care of themselves. They don't require a lot of maintenance. They have a constant supply of food all year round. So really, if you're a disabled person and you're looking to garden, uh, try permaculture because in food forest, Google food forest, and you'll get a lot of great info and it'll take a lot of the intimidation out of the gardening process. Because I know when I was first injured and realized I had these problems and I'm so tired, you know, when you're disabled, it's exhausting. Just living is a job. So to add any chore, I don't do any chores. Like I've stopped cleaning. My house is disgusting. I look like a hoarder of garbage and I don't even care. I just don't care. I do what I can do and what I don't do, I don't do. So last year when the thought of a garden came up, it was forget it. I was just really not gonna happen. This year, I needed an outlet. I needed something. And, uh, and I needed a garden this year. And it's been my self-therapy, and it's helping me a lot. So I just had to make it easy for myself. And um, I think I did that today, and I'm happy. The first tomatoes of the year.